Tommy Robinson, the far right, the government. What do they all have in common, mate? They're making it seem like only Islam is the problem. Muslims are being violent out of the blue and to countries that are just minding their own business. And when the media starts peddling this concept as well, then it seems like it's everywhere because the media has a power to do that I'm afraid. And because of that, people are cheesed off and rightly so, to such a degree that even Muslims are questioning their faith. And there are constant calls to reform, reinterpret and censor Islam as well. I myself was a victim to this and I'll ask myself, why are Muslims doing this? Why can't we just live in peace? Why is it always us mate? But the answer becomes clear when you listen to non-mainstream scholars and when you read non-mainstream history books. Bearing that in mind, what you're about to hear is gonna blow your mind. <laughs> All right guys before you think I'm uh, just giving my own opinions, here are the three books that I have used as sources for this video. Britain has been interfering in world politics as far back as we can see. If it's not colonizing and enslaving, it's assassinating world leaders and training radical groups for their own interests. Big claims? Hmm, <laughs> time to back it up mate. How have Britain been supporting Islamists, extremists or terrorists, whatever you want to call them? Number one, in Iran they wanted to get rid of Mossadegh you know. so they supported the Ayatollahs. Number two, in Iran they wanted to get rid of the Ayatollahs so they supported and armed Saddam Hussein. You know. Number three, Egypt they wanted to get rid of Gamal Abdul Nasser so they supported the Muslim Brotherhood. Number four, Indonesia they wanted to get rid of Sukarno so they supported Darul Islam. Number five, Afghanistan. They wanted to get rid of the Soviet influence so they supported the Mujahideen. Number six in Kosovo, they wanted to get rid of Slobodan Milosevic so they supported the Kosovo Liberation Army. Number seven, in Israel, they're supporting the Zionists to have a good influence over the Middle East by supporting an illegal naval blockade by permitting a trade with illegal settlements. Some of the modern day examples of course supporting the Libyan rebels against Gaddafi, supporting the Syrian rebels as well. Author Mark Hello. Curtis looked at the UK planning files from 1940 to 1970 couldn't look at the ones after because they became classified but what he noticed was there was no mention of any grand principles such as democracy, peace or human rights. In fact most of these things were done for national interest which is mostly economic, strategic and corporate. It was in our national interest. If that's not enough they plotted to assassinate loads of leaders mate. Number one Enver Raja of Albania. Number two Sukarno of Indonesia. Number three Gamal Abdel Nasser of Egypt. Number four Milton Abote of Uganda. And number five Slobodan Milosevic of Yugoslavia. And also the UN guy Doug Hammarskjöld. Now before I wrap up this video here are a few honorable mentions. Number one, depopulating an entire island of Diego Garcia just so the US can build a military base there. Number two, having a role in the Rwandan genocide. Number three, telling us that this is a repressive regime but behind the scenes selling weapons to these repressive regimes again and again and again. And of course fiddling around with borders. Let's look at the Balfour Declaration in which the UK literally handed Palestine over to the Israelis. The Sykes and Pico agreement where after the Ottoman Empire the Middle East was literally carved up and borders were drawn. Britain had ruled over Hindustan, India, 
Pakistan and Bangladesh for about 200 years. When they left, there was disputed territory with regards to Kashmir. But even till today, wars have been fought between Pakistan and India with regards to Kashmir. The border between Pakistan and Afghanistan was actually drawn by the UK as well. It's known as the Durant Line. And that border has never been accepted by Pakistan or Afghanistan because it separates two major tribes, the Pashtuns and the Baloch. Let's not forget the scramble for Africa in which Europe literally drew borders on Africa as well, deciding and cutting up tribes, you on that side, you on that side. Because of that we have wars even till today mate. In Yorkshire there's a place called Men With Hill. That's actually a drone facility owned by UK and US through which they're sending drones to Yemen, Somalia and Pakistan to kill innocent people. Because we do know according to statistics there's a lot of innocent civilian casualties. I'm not saying for a minute killing innocent people is okay but you have to understand it's not because of scripture, it's not because of religion, it's because of the foreign policy and the politics that have been going on and that are still going on. Alright so let's see what the leading experts in this field think about this. MI5. Far from being religious zealots, a large number of those involved in terrorism do not practice their faith regularly. Let's see what Dr. Mark Sageman says who is a former CIA operations officer and the US government advisor on the war on terror. He says terrorism is really political violence first and foremost. Professor Scott Atron, a leading expert in radicalization, he's interviewed Al Qaeda and ISIL fighters. If you dialogue with these people there is very little discussion of religion. On your way guys we're going to change that is number one, stop watching your hundred series episodes and actually read from alternative sources and media. But anyway I don't want this video to be too long because then people aren't going to bother even clicking on it, probably going to go watch the Kardashians or whatnot. So until next time guys, Asalaamu As Alaikum.